So after World War One, uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, there was there were a lot of artistic responses to the conflict, and and one of the genres of art um, that we see these responses um, is in poetry. You see here the uh, Chilean poet Gabriela Mistral looking very serious and studious, uh, and she's a poet um, in whom we can locate. Uh, a lot of the response uh, to World War One, although I mean that seems so at first. Um, she was born in Chile uh, in 1889, and she was born about 400 miles outside of the capital uh, of Santiago. She began her professional career as a school teacher, and she was writing poetry on the side while she had that job. Um, but eventually, she uh, was published, um, and she gained enough um, of an income uh, from her poetry and, and enough sort of notoriety um, that she became a poet by profession. Later in her career, she also became a very respected and beloved diplomat and human rights advocate. Uh, and she was uh, known for her stance against marginalizing um, minority cultures uh, across the world, not just in her own home country um, of Chile. She was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, um, and the Nobel Committee, when they selected her, what they, they mentioned that the reason why she was they awarded her this prize um, was really for the emotional impact um, of her poetry. Um, she writes poetry um, that seems very simple and straightforward and almost juvenile in a way, but you can sort of argue that this simplicity of her poetry uh, in a way, harkens back to a more innocent time before World War I, before um, the world kind of had to grow up um, even more than it had to with previous conflicts and revolutions and whatnot. Um, and as we sort of look now at one of her more famous poems, which is Dame la mano, or Give Me Your Hand, um, this you can sort of see um, that it looks pretty simple, right? Um, it's in very regular meter and verse. It almost has a sort of children's lyric quality. And Mistral was famous for writing um, what seemed like very simple, approachable, um, childlike poems, but that really pack an emotional punch. And, and that sort of buried in that simplicity um, is a really a sort of emotional density. Uh, and so we sort of have to, with a poem like this, um, thinking about sort of post-World War I, um, is... Uh, look deep and you'll see sort of this, um, almost this sort of craving for innocence and this sense of loss in her poetry. Um, again, she's known for her very simple, short lyrics, but in them she packs a lot of um, sort of emotional punch and, and one of those emotions is, is loss. Um, so um, someone hopefully in this classroom who has a much better um, command of Spanish than I do um, can read this um, in Spanish uh, and then, of course, give it a read in English. Um, if you're a Spanish speaker, um, you may or may not be horrified by the translation. You know, poetry is very difficult to translate um, between languages. Um, having done it myself, I can tell you it's very difficult. Um, so you'll, you'll probably have some justifiable quibbles with Ursula K. Le Guin, who is a very noted translator um, of Spanish language poetry. So um, don't be, do be don't be too put off by the translation. But um, as you read it and talk about it, or whatever, just uh, note uh, note this the style. Of it, and a, a fair number of poets during Gabriela Mistral's time were also returning to this more kind of I don't know, you know sort of innocent, simple um, seeming poetry. Um, other poets at the time were were actually throwing out a lot of structures and were going much more sort of modernist, avant garde. Um, but Mistral and others like her um, were sort of returning to a more traditional um, sort of uh, form, but putting this sort of post World War One sort of more um, uh, desolate twist on it and giving it a, a certain, um, uh, not a nostalgia, um, but a certain um, plaintiveness and a kind of sadness um, in thinking about sort of how the world had changed um, uh, after the war and this innocence that she kind of builds into her poetry. She kind of argues in, in a way we're never going to get it back. So enjoy.